Since I've cut a few stones on the channel now, I thought today it might be nice to go through an actual faceting diagram and run through kind of what the different areas mean and how to interpret it, basically. There's a lot of sort of open access diagrams that you can choose from. This one is called Yggdrasil by Arya Akvan. And the basic breakdown of the diagram is obviously the title, and then you have a top-down crown view, a side view, and then sort of the opposite side view, and then the pavilion view looking at it from underneath. This works for angles for Ri equals 1.72. Ri is refractive index, and that varies by stone. So 1.72 uh, works for, it says down here, from quartz to rutile. Ri 152 to 262 uh, with no changes. So although it says 1.72, it does work for a range in this case. And a lot of what you'll see here is kind of standard on the different faceting diagrams nowadays. It didn't used to be this standardized. Everybody kind of had their own style for a number of years, but everybody's kind of adopted this style more or less. But you have the number of facets next, 33 plus eight girdles. So there's 33 facets on the top and bottom and then eight girdle facets around the edge of the stone. And it's a two-fold mirror image symmetry. It works for a 96 index. So the 96 is where that little dot is. As you can see, it goes from 90 to the little dot to six. So that's 96 or zero. And that's the only index gear I have. So all of my diagrams right now are 96 indexes. And underneath there is a bunch of ratios that you can use to calculate what sort of stone rough you'll need in order to produce this design. So it's a length to width of one, which means that it's square or round, but in this case, it's square. This way equals that way. T to W, T is the table, width is the, or W is width. So the table to width is 0.265. U to W is sort of the other, start, other part of the table, which is the same since this is a you know, mirror image. P to W, pavilion to width, C to W, crown to width, and then volume to cube width is 0.243. This is if you want to get really technical and if you're like cutting it close or you have, if you're really trying to make the most out of your uh, stone rough. On here, there are a number of little labels to reference to, and those relate to the instructions, which are down at the bottom of the diagram. The majority of cutters go pavilion first, or the bottom side, and then the crown first, because on the pavilion, you don't have a lot of leeway in how much depth you can lose in order to make your stone work in terms of the brilliance and getting the light shine in there and back out. And you can be a little more flexible on the crown You change these angles a little bit if you're running out of room to some extent. But we have the pavilion and then P1 is so pavilion one, G1 is girdle one, and then P2 is pavilion two. And these are listed in order of recommended ways to, or recommended order to cut it. For pavilion one, the angle that you wanna set your protractor to is 43.35 or as best as you can. Some have digital guides, but mine is a, just a you know, regular protractor basically. And let's see, 43.35. So I would change mine to 43 there. In order to do fractions of a degree, I have to use this upper scale here. And you do that by adjusting the different lines to line up with the nearest line over here. When this next line is lined up with the 45 there, that's at 43.1. And so I would go over a little bit and then lock it in. But once you have your angle set, you run through the different indexes that it gives here for that angle. So you start out with uh, one. So you set this over one notch, that's one degree. And then you would cut in and then go over to 23. 23 is right there, 24 is there. There are usually tips next to the instructions. So for this one, you're cutting to a center point, which means that all of your facets will cut to a center point. You can use that to judge if you're even as you cut around the stone. Make sure that they all come to a very nice point that's sort of centered in the stone rough that you have. And then you would change it to do the girdle to set the size of the stone, set stone size right there. And you do that by 
bringing the protractor down to 90 degrees there. This is upside down, sorry. This handpiece design sits on a table over here, and so the girdle sticks out straight here, and you would lay that on the uh, lap disc and cut out your girdle in those angles, and then go in and change it to the P2 setting at 41.36, and do those last four cuts. Up here, you can see there's P1, G1, and P2. So what you do first is you cut in these P1 facets, which I imagine start out, they look more like triangles, like that. So P1, the first cut would be here, and then the second one would be there, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And there's eight numbers down here. And then when you add the P2 girdle later, you cut in these four uh, checkerboard here, and that makes those four line, that, those four squares there. Once you've cut everything in on the pavilion, you run through it on different grits from whatever your highest grit is, like, or your roughest grit, 180 or 360, whatever you're cutting it in on, and you go to a final polish on the pavilion, so it's completely finished before you switch over to the crown, because then you have to transfer the stone to a different dop, and then cut the top side of the stone, or the crown, and you basically follow the same pattern crown one, crown two, crown three, and then T is table. So you'd cut these facets, C1, all the way around. There's eight of those. C2, looks like there's eight of those as well, so you'd cut in these sort of more elongated triangles there. Uh, C3 is these four at the top here, and then the table is the flat. So for the table, you set it at zero degrees, so op obviously opposite of 90, on this pr protractor anyway. Slap it up to 90, lock it in, and then your stone is facing straight down towards the lap, and you cut in the crown table. So that's the basic directions for reading a fastening diagram and sort of the steps you run through. It's pretty straightforward, I, I think. This is a 2018 novice stone for the U.S. Fastener Guild contest, where you can enter your stone for judging and become sort of a certified novice or pre-master, master, and grandmaster are the, the categories. And so in this, con in this competition, the material was a cutter's choice. The novice stones, cutters can choose whatever they want, basically, because it makes it easier for the novices, like me. The only stipulations for the contest are that the width has to be 12 millimeters, plus or minus 0.5 millimeters, and the girdle has to be 0.5 millimeters, plus or minus 0.3 millimeters. So the girdle is here. That has to be 0.5 millimeters in this direction. And the girdle has to be polished. You, a lot of people don't polish the girdles, but in the competition you have to. And then the width has to be 12 millimeters. And so because the, you know the width has to be 12 millimeters, you can use these ratios to calculate the dimensions of the rough that you would need and how far you have to play with the size of the rough that you have in order to cut this competition stone. So that's Yggdrasil. I showed this one on my channel, the Cut for Small Sapphire. This is also on the Faster Guild newsletter, where you have the crown, the pavilion, and then the two side views. It's sort of mirror image there. Eightfold radial symmetry means that you can cut this in eight different directions and it'll be symmetrical. As you can see in this, the pavilion is just basically eight cuts. Uh, it was made by Wayne Barrett for 1.762 refractive index stones. 33 facets, so the other one had 41 facets, so this is a simpler stone. Also 96 index, length to width of 1, so it's the same that way and that way. And then the pavilion is just 38 degrees, those 8 cuts, and then you make the girdle. Then you switch over to the crown and do a couple, basically 16 cuts and then a table. Polish those up and you're all done. And then more complicated designs have more complicated diagrams. This one I'm really interested in doing is called Hanami, which kind of looks like a flower, by Marco Voltolini, who has a lot of very interesting diagrams that are freely available online. It's made for refractive index of 1.54, which is quartz, basically, and has 56 facets and 10 girdles, or 66 facets total. It's a five-fold mirror image symmetry. This one has a few more steps in it than the other two diagrams. We have the crown, pavilion, two side views, cut to temporary CTP. CTP is center point. It's just simpler to write CTP, I guess. 
And so you'll make a temporary center point, sort of find your center of your pavilion, and then you'd cut in with the with other with pavilion two. And this one is just one, two, three, four, five, six instead of P1, P2, etc. And then you switch over to the girdle, set stone size, and then cut in the sort of little nubs on the end there. Go back and level the girdle because it would make kind of a stair step pattern as you go around when you cut in these other uh, girdles. And then six, you'd meet five at the final center point. So that's, these, that's a little star in the center here. This makes a new center point that'll be shallower than the previous center point, so it sort of overrides it. Switch over to the crown, set it to 22.6 degrees. You have 12 facets here to cut in, and you set the girdle thickness with this. So that's crown A, which is these. These are the main petals of the flower. And then you cut in the other facets sort of to meet those at the girdle line, as shown here by 37.34. These six, you level the girdle, same thing with 28 degrees, or crown C and crown B. The tricky part of this, well, one of the tricky parts, I guess, is that there are no meets in this set of crown D facets. So you basically just set the, you cut in as much as you need to to sort of make these look more like petals, because before you cut in this little trapezoid up here, this uh, white area here would extend out that way, and so you need to kind of cut it in to give it a little more shape of a flower petal. And the same thing for E and F. So the little rectangular bars here and the top part there. F is, F is the table. And it says this is set to give the best flower effect with quartz, which is why it's set to R1 or RI of 1.54. It does work for higher refractive indexes. And so it also suggests that you may want to polish only A on the crown and leave the other facets frosted. And so you would have these petals that are clear and transparent to light and maybe would shine a little bit more. And you leave these grayed out areas frosted, essentially don't polish them up as much, cut it, stop it like a 600 or 1200 grit, whatever looks nice without leaving too many big scratches. Well, no big scratches ideally. And then that would be frosted, so you'd have sort of a more contrast effect with the petals and the other parts of the stone. Anyway, that's the whirlwind tour through some faceting diagrams. I hope you found this interesting, and there are tons of resources online for reading these diagrams.